And the home team with a record of 24 and 1, the Region 7A champions, the Rush City Tigers. First, let's meet the cheerleaders from RTR, Russell Tyler Ruthven, Danica Sorensen, Felicia Williams, Robin Beck, and Kathy Bloom, the RTR cheerleaders. Now let's meet the cheerleaders from Rush City. Tanya Meisner, Stacy Knox, Shauna Just, Beth Stromquist, Amy Lozik, and Terry Skelsky, the Rush City Cheerleaders. And now let's meet the non-starters for the visiting team wearing the light-colored jerseys. A 5'11 junior, number 12, guard Jim Nielsen. 5'10 junior, number 14, guard Troy Hauslog. 5'11 sophomore guard, number 20, Brian Bartman. Six foot two, senior forward, number 24, Tim Wartner. Six two, junior forward, number 30, Greg Erdman. Six two, sophomore forward, number 32, Neil Alderson. Six foot three, junior forward, number 34, Dennis Jensen. Five foot ten sophomore forward number forty Eric Hummel. A six foot four junior forward number fifty Troy Roop. And a six foot five junior center number fifty five John DeBoer. Now let's meet the non starters for the Rush City Tigers. Wearing the dark colored home jerseys, a five foot 10 junior guard, number 11, Chad Keeper. Five foot 10 senior guard, number 15, Trevor Christensen. Six foot junior forward, number 23, Kyle Dahlberg. Five nine junior guard, number 25, Anders Johnson. 5'10", sophomore guard, number 31, Chad Beering. 6'4", junior forward, number 33, Jason Hischer. 6'1", junior forward, number 43, Joe Errington. And 6'1", junior center, number 55, Jeff Carlson. Now the starting lineups for both teams, alternating by team, starting with the guards. For RTR, a 5'11 senior, number 10, Darren Hynas. And for Rush City, a six foot senior, number 13, Jason Knutson. At the other guard for RTR, six foot three senior, number 22, Troy Bauman. For Rush City, a six foot senior, number 21, David Schmidt. At center for RTR, a seven foot senior, number 54, Wendell Beisman. And for Rush City, a six seven senior, Number 53, Craig Mill. At forward for RTR, a 6'6 sophomore. Number 44, Lee Rood. And for Rush City, a 6'3 senior. Number 51, Jamie Wright.
Smith, the other forward for RTR, is 6'4", sophomore, 52, Todd Bauman. And for Rush City, a 5'11", senior, number 45, Mike Doherty. RTR head coach Ray Riley in the balance of the Knights official party and Rush City coach Gary Dreisig and the balance of the Tigers official party. The referees for this game are Charles Ochter and Mike Madden. And now, ladies and gentlemen, please stand and sing along as the Russell Tiger Rich High School Band. Back with the start of this game. You can make a great save at Family Night with the Minnesota. Going against the Rush City Tigers, they are 24 and 1. Champions of Region 7A and champions of the Great River Conference. A couple of people will be looking at Janet today. tonight. Oh. Those are the two players to watch tonight. On the right is Wendell Beisman, the seven-foot center from Russell Tyler Ruston, the undefeated team. And on the left, Craig Mallett, 6'7", will have to com combat the height advantage that Wendell Beisman has. So it will be Rush City Tigers with one loss on the season, only coming to Bram, and they have been on a roll ever since. And the undefeated team, the only undefeated team in the Class A field, Russell Tyler Ruston. Okay, here we go with the jump ball. It's controlled by... RTR, the Knights. In the corner, Todd Bauman. Inside they go to Beisman. Spinning around and hits the two. So quickly they go inside to the seven-footer, Wendell Beisman. And there you see some of their pressure uh, defense. And quickly it creates a turnover. And back comes Darren Hines. sophomore who along with Todd Bowman the 6'4 sophomore has provided a lot of scoring power well, excuse me Janet they're get our audio trouble <laughs> we're down having here, trouble the headsets here <laughs> at Williams Arena but anyway off the break they come and the Tigers are finally hit for the score it's 4-2 RTR and that was Craig Mel who averages nearly 22 points a game and 14 rebounds a game. And there's the steal by Mel. And back comes Mel on the break. He takes it off, dishes it off instead. Nicely done. And putting it up and in. For Rush City was number 13, Jason Knutson. Mel did a nice job of keeping under control there without committing an offensive charging foul. Alman takes it down the lane, and he is fouled by Jason Knutson. Troy Bauman, one of the players returning from a year ago. Let's take a look at it as he just decides to take himself down the lane. And there you see that Canusa is not set defensively. And they'll call the foul on out of bounds. The first team foul, first foul of the ball game. And it's on the Rush City Tigers. Making their first state appearance since 1916. I think the whole town is here. To the hole oh, was Todd Bauman. The rebound by Troy. And he will... Go to the line. The foul will be on Craig Mel. There you saw some of the athletic ability of Todd Bauman. He's also a high jumper and a long jumper in track and field, and you can see his move underneath. Just a sophomore, but he sure is smooth. Well, we're off and going here. Tied at four now uh, as RTR goes to the line. It's Troy Bauman. Troy Bauman and his brother are the sons of assistant coach J.B. Bauman. Well, he sinks the second of the two, and his team has a 5-4 to four lead. And with that, we'll switch back over to the St. Paul Civic Center. Half a minute. Coming in May. 
Minutes halftime, Robbinsdale Armstrong 41, Minneapolis South 28. Meanwhile, over at Williams Arena, Class A quarterfinal, RTR and Rush City going at it. So let's swing on over and pick up the action with Perry and Jim. Thank you, Doug. Now we're cooking as first period is uh, 237 left, and on the rebound was Lee Rude as the RTR Knights, ranked number one in the state in Class A, unbeaten at 24 0, have a 17 10 lead over the Rush City Tigers. They are 24-1. Spinning move, shot taken by David Schmidt, fall short. And the rebound comes down to RTR. RTR doing the job defensively. Had a couple steals and scores by Darren Hines, And that helped uh, contribute to their advantage. The drive underneath and the dish off, that was Troy Bauman penetrating their dish off. They called the foul on uh, Jamie Wright. RTR getting off to a quick start in the game as we look at Bauman on the drive. And they're going to call the foul on Jamie Wright for the block. That is the fourth team foul on the Tigers here in the first half. Inbound pass along underneath. Fancy move there by Bauman. Cannot get the bucket to go. Gets his own rebound inside to Feisman, the seven-footer. And he can't get it to drop. And again, uh, they get the rebound as Russell Tyler Wilson applying themselves along the board. But finally, Lee Rood is called for a foul underneath the basket and uh, the Rush City Tigers will come in. One difference early here, Perry, that I've noticed is that RTR really sends a lot of people to the offensive boards. You saw a number of people in on those offensive rebounds. Rush City, on the other hand, has not had a lot of help on, on the second shot opportunity. So they're going to need to hit it pretty hard. The drive to the hoop and the call foul is Craig Mell, who has over a thousand points in his career. was on his way in. He was hammered. Rush City uh, reached the regional finals a year ago. They lost to Big Fork. And by this time, they defeated Big Fork 68-62. So revenge was sweet for the Tigers. They are in the dark uniforms, the royal blue and gold. RTR in the white, navy blue, and Columbia blue. For three. Yes, so that was David Schmidt. 17-13 RTR. David Schmidt averaging 15 and a half points a game. Rush City has great scoring balance. Behind Mel, they have Wright and Schmidt and Knutson all in double figures. That's one way to counterbalance the height of RTR inside. Get it from long range. Inside, they go to Beisman, dishes back out to Todd Bauman. Inside to his brother Troy off the glass. Nice move by the 6'3 senior guard, nickname Ice. And he certainly was hot there. Underneath come uh, the Rush City Tigers, and the rebound goes up and in. Blocked by Rude, but it was picked up by David Schmidt, number 21 on the score. Uh, Jamie Wright. Connecting, and here along the baseline, and they will call the travel. As Todd Bauman, who had 22 dunks on the season, was looking for number 23 there, but he took just one. <laughs> the, that was an NBA move, though. It sure was. They would, they would not have called traveling if that was the doctor. You don't see many sophomores take it to the hoop like that. That's for sure. So we're inside now. 30 seconds in the first quarter. Trapped underneath there, finally ditched out, and here is uh, Knudsen, Jason Knudsen along the baseline. Can I get it to fall? Pulled down there by... Neil Alderson, at number Neil 32, Alderson. got that rebound. He's checked in for Wendell Beisman, who's taking a break. Kind of sneak in and out on us, don't they? Yeah. They're on bias and they're back to the bench. The end of the quarter is a good time to substitute, though, Perry, for Beisman just to keep him fresh through these three days of basketball. And short break. Troy Bauman from outside. Not there. Spins out. So that does it for the first quarter of our third Class A quarterfinal game. And after eight minutes of play, it's the Knights of RTR 19, the Rush City Tigers 15. Back with second half action after this break from the 1989 Minnesota Boys State High School Basketball Tournament. players that he's used to going into that line and what a line it is for RTR. They have a seven footer, 6'4", six, 6'6", six, six across backcourt to 
We mentioned about the Rust City fans. They have a couple long timers who are annual visitors of the Minnesota State High School Tournament. Andy Saluka, since 1931, he's been coming here, so he is attending his 59th tournament. And another one, George Fahrenholtz, since 1943. So they certainly love the Minnesota boys basketball tournament. Happy to have them here in person. I'm sure they're proud of their Tigers for their 1988-89 season. No trouble on handling that press for RGR. Now Wendell Beisman is back in. Now he has the ball, goes to the hoop, loses control, puts it up, gets his own rebound off the glass, not there, and finally tipped up and in. Not sure if it was Beisman or Lee Rude. Or if it was a Rush City player. I'm not sure who scored that basket. Beisman looks much improved off last year, Perry. He's really active inside there, showing us a little fake and drop step. Well, that uh, was forced in there. The basket went to Rude, by the way. Forced pass and the turnover grab by Darren Hines and dished off to Troy Bowman. Inside they go for Rude. Rude spins around off the glass out there. Beisman can for the rebound, and here come the Tigers. They trail 21 15, 6 55. They go dish off nicely underneath and off the glass as Jamie Wright put it in for two. From the pass from Jason Knudsen. Nicely done. No one cut off Jason Knudsen on that drive, and he penetrated and created an opportunity for Stephen. Spinning around, and it's Bauman that puts it up off the glass to not get the rebound. The ball is loose underneath, and they'll jump it up as not really a fair match, but Mike Doherty, number 45, doing battle there with Wendell Bison. And the possession arrow points to the Knights. The inbound a wonderneath, and it goes to Bison. That is a gimme. As Bison uh, score there, you see the last bucket, and that was nicely done. But back on the other side, RTR has scored now. We're even up at 23 to 18. And the Knights, the Tigers have the ball. Along the baseline to drive a little bit hard, and uh, Todd Bauman has the ball. This is off to brother Troy, who is two years his senior, and the senior. They were here a year ago. Underneath the root, and it was there. Boy, they used that beautiful pass from Bauman, and Root put it softly in, and it's 25-18. Nicely done by Lee Root. You look at this 2-3 zone now by RTR. You've got such a tall front line down there with Beisman. And also Lee Root at 6'6", and Todd Bauman at 6'4". Looks like that foul will be called, though, on Wendell Beisman, his second. And Beisman has been playing very aggressively. I think he probably is going to be concerned about, about getting into foul trouble. Well, he hit himself on the head, and uh, I think he knew they should put his arms straight up instead of leaning over the player. Mm -hmm. And going to the line for the Rush City Tigers, number 51, Jamie Wright. The game against Taylor Falls this year hit for 23, including 11 13 from the field and 11 rebounds. And he's short on that free throw. Beck averages 11 rebounds a game, and they'll need him inside tonight against the size of uh, RTR. Rush City coach Gary Dreisick was joking at the bank when he said, We've waited since 1916 to get here, and if history repeats itself, we'll be, we'll be back in the year 2062. <laughs> I bet you some of those longtime fans will still be coming. <laughs> Somewhere they'll be watching. The move by the sophomore Bauman does not fall inside. And back come the Tigers on the break. This is Knutson, number 13. Dishes it off, but just nobody there. A little too quick. A little bit anxious, check. perhaps. It's neat to see how these communities have taken pride in their teams, though. RTR certainly has a huge following from Russell Tyler Rusin. And Rush City also. It's got to be very exciting. They have a fine squad this year. They are 24 and 1, captured the Region 7 8 title, the Great River Conference title. First time since 1980 they've done that, the conference championship. Inside they go for Bauman, and uh, the foul will be called on David Schmidt. Talking about Todd Bauman, and that is the fifth foul, so he will go to the line and uh, shoot the 1 and 1. Schmidt is pleading his case, saying, Bauman is holding me, he's holding me. But I think that Schmidt was undecided in how he was going to defend Bauman. There you see some of the Rust City Tiger band. Their director is Morris Engler. 193 students in the school and 193 for RTR. So enrollment-wise, they are even up. But on the scoreboard, it is now 27-18. RTR is leading. So with that break and 5.07 remaining in the first half, 
Everyone wants to talk it over, and we will pause for this brief message. RTR leading it 27-18. Picture this. really look good right now. Rush City may be a little bit shaken. They've come down several times and haven't even gotten a shot to the basket because of those turnovers. And they need to get two here before, as, we, as you can see, we're in our last 30 seconds of the half. Well, we talked tournament experience, too. RTR was in the championship game a year ago, losing to De La Salle, 58-36. So most of these fellows are back from a year ago. And that's just kind of typical of what's been happening here in the second quarter. That is now the 12th turnover in the first half for the Tigers, and certainly not what Gary uh, Reising had in mind. As they play for the last shot, knocked out of bounds, good defense by David Schmidt. We have four seconds remaining. Coming here for the Tigers is Chad Beering. He's a 5'10 sophomore forward. Todd Bauman from long range. Gets the front of the rim. I think one more step he might have had it, but not the base. Nevertheless, certainly Ray Riley and the RTR Knights will take it. They lead at the halftime of this Class A quarterfinal game, the third of four. 33-19 over the Rust City Tigers. Back with more at Williams Arena after this. Out of the St. Paul Civic Center in Class AA action. They have not looked back and they've had excellent evenings from Lee Rood and the Bauman boys, Troy and Todd Bauman. Rood with 18, Bauman, uh, Weisman inside the big fellow with 10. Troy Bauman there now with his 11th point of the game. Leading the way for the Rest City Tigers is Jamie Wright. He has 13. But just the size and the quickness and uh, perhaps a tournament experience really coming to four tonight. The foul will be called on uh, number 22, Troy Bauman. Rush City, of course, uh, they lost to 
Brown by a 60 to 50 score, but they reeled off 10 straight wins. The victories over Mountain Iron Buell in the regionals, then the regional finals of the Big Four. So this is J David Smith, a six foot senior. They have an all senior cast, whereas RTR has the seniors and the two sophomores. Well, they got some jumping jacks through the nights Ooh. as uh, Boy, do they. we see Todd Bauman while you were away do some flying and gliding uh, around the basket, offensively and defensively. It's Wendell Bison, a seven foot center, one of only a handful to play in the Minnesota State Tournament. This is off to his senior teammate, Troy Bauman, who goes along the baseline, runs out of real estate, and finally knocked out of bounds. And uh, Rush City was an effective defense there. Well, it worked out okay. They didn't they didn't score, but it's never a good idea to let a player wander freely on the baseline. There's Darren Hines with the ball. Game of keep away as they lead it comfortably, 57-31. And down the lane, the traffic, a good steal there by Jason Knudsen on the break is Knudsen. Off the glass for two. Jason Knudsen with the steal and score. The six-foot senior guard. Nicely done. Vice President of the Student Council, member of the National Honor Society. The Rush City hand, fans had a big welcome home celebration for the Rush City Tigers when they beat Big Fork in that regional final parry. They were in the gym until 1.30 in the morning, they said, hooping and hollering. Well, they have curfew for those folks. <laughs> They said that nobody wanted to go home, so they have enjoyed this experience. Well, on the break uh, come the Tigers, and up, fan in by Jamie Wright. Everyone knows I'm always home by 1.30. <laughs> Underneath the lead route with a great game. Now they're spreading it out so much. Very impressive show. They certainly have the clock to work down. And a good defensively there as they sag in with Schmidt. And on the break come the Tigers. The City with a drive. This is Knudsen up the middle. Oh, nice job. Jason Knudsen sparking his team. 20 points. The advantage now. And RTR wants to talk it over, although they still lead comfortably. 57-37. We'll take a break. Here at Williams Arena, side of the Class A Boys quarterfinal. Well, you look at the development of some of the kids you saw last year from RTR. I'm sure a lot of them went to basketball camps and some other things along the way. And I know you're active in your own camp game. Uh, what, is, what are some of the people, what do they look for when they go to a summer camp? Well, I think the biggest thing, certainly the RTR boys and anybody that's serious about becoming good basketball players, like the Staples and Motley boys, you're just looking for an opportunity to play a lot in the summertime. And that's really when players are, are born and made. And as you take a look at someone like Todd Bauman, we saw him last year as a freshman, and he has developed so much from last year to this year. But it's just an opportunity to play against different competition, try out some new moves, and you can see how he has, has really improved greatly over the last year. But as a player, certainly you can't expect to put the basketball down in the summertime and, and pick it up again when the season starts. It just doesn't work that way. So I'm, I'm excited about running my own camps for girls in Minnesota, and I know there are a lot of other camps and leagues all around the metro and all across the state for kids to get a lot of playing time in. It's a year-round game. Todd Bowman misses the second. He certainly wanted the jam there. Not so. Back come the Tigers. And there you see the crash of the boards underneath. And they'll call the foul on the number 32, Neil Anderson uh, of the RTR Knights. You see some of the band members of wrestling. Whole school, the whole community, everybody is involved with the Tiger season. And don't forget the consolation games, 8.30 tomorrow at the St. Paul Civic Center, Pipestone, Crosby Ironton meeting up. And probably Rush City against uh, either Staples Mountain and Cato Loyola. If you're in that neighborhood, you may want to come out and support those teams and make it to that consolation bracket. Championship series, semifinal tomorrow, Class A at the St. Paul Civic Center, Class AA, semifinals in the afternoon in St. Paul. 
Well, it looks like RTR will keep their undefeated record intact, while Rush City has got to be difficult. Only one loss in a season, the best record ever for that school. Seeing Troy Bauman picking up the foul on his drive to the basket. Talking to uh, Tom Greenho of the University of Minnesota Sports Information Department, who is helping out the high school league here. And he has been to so many of these events at Williams Arena, so many boys tournaments. He said he had never seen a bigger crowd for uh, a boys gathering than we have here tonight. And that's a credit to the four teams involved, Mankato, Loyola, Staples, Motley, Rust City, and the RTL. Well, I'm not very good at judging crowds, but it's a similar crowd to any of the Gopher games. Upper deck, scattered of people. Well, we're going to ask our statistician, uh, Rick Benson, to count every one of the fans <laughs> in here. He's done a good job, thank him, and for his efforts here tonight. You know, our city has, has played with a lot of heart, though, Perry. They, even though they've been behind and have been down by a lot, they haven't given up here. And they played hard the, the entire 30, 32 minutes. Now you always want to give it your best. And no better place in the state tournament. Here he comes, looking for the jam, and he dishes off to his brother instead as Todd Bauman feeds Troy Bauman, and it's 60-37 in about 2.15 remaining. It's showtime here for RTR, and on the other end, David, nice move by Dave Schmidt. Dave Schmidt on the baseline, nice drive. He's had a solid game. see when head coach uh, Ray Riley starts making substitutions. He's got to start looking forward, I'd imagine, to uh, tomorrow night. No doubt he will have his scouting book out ready to take some notes in the next game. Well, we see Rush City start to make substitutions. Coming in will be uh, Joe Arrington and Chad Keeper. Anders Johnson coming in. Jeff Carlson, and number 23, Kyle Dahlberg, whose nickname is Patsy. He's such a Patsy. <laughs> and some substitutions now for the RTR Knights. Uh, Tim Warther's in, and also coming in will be Troy Hauslog. Long night for the Tigers. The Knights had that 12 to 2 run to end the half and to start the second, and they had the Tigers by the tail and never let go. Now checking in is Johnny DeBoer, number 55. I'd imagine he's played a little football in his day. Mm -hmm. Checking in for Lee Rude, who had an excellent night. You got Lee Rude and Todd Baum and this young man, both sophomores, to build around for the future. It looks like it's going to be a bright one for Ray Riley. And RTR. Well, there we see some of the other changes. Jim Nielsen coming in. He is a 5'11 junior guard. And Todd Bauman at the line. And so he cans that one. And with the score 61-39, RTR, it's been... ...teams as we wind down here. Uh, 142 remaining. And inbounding it. And then it'll be Chad Keeper with the basketball. Down at the corner. Johnson, Andrews Johnson, and spinning around underneath. Shot taken and missed there by Carlson. This is it back out. Another shot taken by Dahlberg gets there, and uh, the RTR Knights come over with the rebound, and it's House Law in control. Nielsen with the shot. Doesn't fall. The battle for the rebound underneath. And controlled there by House Law. Good job by House Law to keep the possession without a turnover. 5'10 junior guard. Spinning around. There's DeBoer, and stolen by Rossetti. The drive and the score by Kyle Dahlberg. He's a six-foot junior. Big Getting game against Taylor points. Falls, too. 11 points, 10 boards. A lot of these kids seeing some playing time. And out of bounds, it'll go across. 
And checking in will be Troy Roop. And checking out will be DeBoer. We're at the uh, 30 second mark. And there are seconds, I'm sure, of the Tigers. We just see two teams uh, go by quickly, but instead there is a foul on Jeff Carlson. And that will send. We'll check it. That was on Root. And Carlson will go to the line. So RTR is going to go 25 and 0. Champion Region 3A. Rust City will go 24 and 2. His nickname is Big Man. He was an all-conference baseball player last year. I like his uh, sports heroes. Kind of a weird group. <laughs> Tim Lauder. Okay, fine. Twin sketcher. Brian Bosworth and Ben Johnson. Maybe we need to talk to Jeff about his role models. <laughs> but outside, they hit it. And it's 61-43. Now, who's going to take the last shot? Underneath it goes, and it'll go to RTR, so. Uh, one more chance, perhaps, as in bowling it will be uh, Ray Erdman. Underneath it goes, up and in for Troy Roop, and that will do it as RTR has advanced to the semifinals with a 20-point victory here tonight, 63-43 over the Tigers from Rust City. Well, we weren't quite sure what to expect coming in here. We thought RTR, being number one, being unbeaten, would have the advantage. But certainly uh, their experience, perhaps, in tournament play was a telling point. And their size and their quickness on defense really did the job on Rush City. Certainly they came out ready to play and came out strong, not committing any turnovers, but forcing so many on the, ha on the behalf of Rush City. Rush City, with those turnover problems, really had a difficult time getting anything going today. Craig Mel, much better player than perhaps he was able to show tonight, but you've got to give a lot of credit to Gary Dreisig in getting his Rush City Tigers at least to the state tournament and here for this weekend of basketball. No question, a very proud Rush City of their Tigers this year. Tough night for Craig Mel, two points. He averaged 21 a game throughout the year, but not tonight. The size of RTR too much. 